This is Don't Panic, episode 339, recorded May 23rd, 2022. Untitled Dan and Colby episode. Uh, hello, I'm Colby Rabideau, and welcome to Don't Panic. And I'm here with a guy who just snagged his parents' keys off the kitchen counter and is taking their podcast studio for a joyride. It's Dan Miller. <laughs> How are you, Dan? What's up? I feel very powerful. I feel I have unlimited power. Actually, I don't have any power. You have all the power. I, <laughs> I feel no different, actually. I take it all back. There's like so was it we were able to pick tabs. the uh sorry? I was just uh, commenting on my power. There's there's new tabs in here and new buttons. It's crazy. Oh uh, yeah, I've never seen those tabs. That's cool. Media um laughing. Media. Oh my god! Can you, wait, does that mean you can like put things on the screen or something? What is media? <laughs> Did you hear that sound I just played? Pre oh preview no. ready? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Colby has all the. Power. Oops! I didn't mean to play it again. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's all kinds That's of stuff great. in here. I can't I believe know, Sean never uses those. Oh my god, do they have a smoke weed every day clip? <laughs> <laughs> that's no, a throwback. <laughs> I don't even know what that's from. <laughs> I think it's from a Snoop Dogg song originally. I heard it from the Morning Stream podcast where they had it as a sound clip. Right. Right. And I heard it from you. Right. And yeah, so so the the circle of life goes. Right. Um, how's it going? What, what's the what does Sean do? There's some there's some banter. There's some life updates. Any life updates? It's been two weeks. Well, I had COVID. I didn't get sick. Right. But I had COVID. So I guess that's as good as it could have been. Um, How as far many as... tests did you have to take before you found out that you had COVID? Uh, three. Or was it instantly? You took a test and. Okay. It's, I took a couple of at-home tests, which all said I was negative. Mm -hmm. And then we were supposed to do a Maris Buds uh, weekend extravaganza at an Airbnb in the Poughkeepsie area. Um, and because I the previous weekend I had been like known exposed to COVID, my sister was not sick that weekend, but then became sick later in the week. Uh so I was like, I'm going to go like the morning we left, I went to the place around the corner that, you know, gives outrageously expensive, but one hour turnaround time, like lab tests for COVID. And I paid them like $200. Mm -hmm. And then an hour later, Ooh. yeah, yeah it's, it's a racket. It's, it's, it's a, it's one of those places where it's like, it's really tailored for people who are about to get on a plane. Um, Right. Which is not me, oh, yeah, but I was sort of a country or something that requires it. Right. So I was, I was sort of traveling. So I did that and then I got my test in an hour and it said I was positive. Interesting. Was... So you never got a positive at home test. No, no. And I, I, huh. I took them subsequently and I continued to not get positive at home tests. Really? Wow, yeah. that I didn't think that was how that worked. That's yeah, disturbing. <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't take <laughs> it for a while. Like I did, I did the, I got the lab test, and then the the whatever this the state guidance here is like, you should you should quarantine for at least five days. Um, so I did mm -hmm. that and I didn't, I didn't get sick or anything, but then after five days, I took a couple of, a couple more at home tests and no, uh, you know, Oh, no. I see. So it could have been positive in between. Right. But I didn't, I didn't ask it. cause it didn't, didn't seem relevant, but yes. And those tests aren't free either, but they're cheaper. Right. Did right. you get your four free, uh, t at home tests from uncle Sam? Oh Yeah. They haven't come yet, but I did order them. Well, that sucks. Or I guess yeah. it could have been worse, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> That's the uh, other uh, side of it. 
I didn't get sick. Laura didn't never even tested positive the whole time. So wow, wow. Did Definitely. she have to take any special precautions in the uh, the quarantining period? We talked or did about she choose it. Choose to take any special precautions. <laughs> yeah. So we t- we talked about it and decided it was just not practical because of the size of our apartment. <laughs> so got it. She, yeah. She did quarantine you with could, me. You could. No. Oh yeah. I was just gonna say she like she just like uh, worked from home for. A few days, right. but you're not you locked say? in here with me. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's all. My other joke wouldn't have made sense. I was trying to figure out how you could split your apartment in half, but you really can't, <laughs> um, because the toilet is perpendicular to the door. So yeah, that's yeah. I can't even just split the toilet down the middle and <laughs> <laughs> call it even. <laughs> oh, well. yeah. Uh, but that's my, uh, I've had two small trips planned this year and both have been canceled due to illness. So we're, uh, over two, over two. That's great. Yeah. Just won't try and go anywhere um, anymore. Yeah. Well, really don't because I went on a trip and it was fine on the way there. Pro tip, this might be helpful for you too, but there's a Newark airport Amtrak station um, that is different from the Newark Amtrak station. And you can get to it directly from the airport. So you can fly into Newark and just get on the Amtrak, go to New York, go to DC, go all the way to Boston sure. um, if you want to. Uh, so, and there's a train, exactly one train every day that goes from Newark to my mom's hometown. So I did that and that was great. And then on the way back, I did the same thing and I got to the Newark airport and I got there early, as you do, and I show up at the gate where it says that my plane is scheduled to leave from, and there's a bunch of people milling about, and I'm like, wow, like, people are here early. And then I realized, oh, there's like a 6 o'clock flight to Seattle and a 7 o'clock flight to Seattle, and the 6 o'clock flight was just now leaving because it was like 5.30. Like, okay. So I'll, I'll go to a less populated area of the airport, wait until about 6.30, and then I'll head back over. So I do that and I come back over and it's still just like completely, or there's a bunch of people coming off the plane. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, Oh, that's weird. But then I was like, Oh wait, but that probably makes sense. If, if it's a plane that just arrived from Seattle and they're just going to pick sure. up a bunch of people and bring it back. Okay. Right, 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 right. And so then I'm waiting and it's just like all the people, but then the weird thing was all the people who got off the plane kind of stuck around. Um, and then I'm getting these like delay notifications on my phone. I'm like, ah, okay. In my experience, two delays means a cancellation, even <laughs> if it's just two 15-minute delays. Yep. So I get my two 15-minute delays. I'm like, this is not looking good. And then I realized that the people who were getting off the plane were the people who were boarding the plane before, but the plane just never took off because the air conditioner was broken, so they all had to get off the plane. Oh, no. And all those people were, not all, some of those people were rescheduled onto our flight. Um which has now been twice delayed. And then it was like, you know, an hour delay, an hour and a half delay. And then it was like, you know, your flight has been canceled. Go to, and this was an announcement um, over the loudspeaker. Go to the ticket desk to rebook, to get your rebooked flight or to get your rescheduled flight or something like that. So I was like, okay. And I like instantly book it to the ticket desk, which is outside of security. Because by the way, the New York airport, have you ever been in that LaGuardia airport or the Guardia terminal, it's like a temporary office space that's been converted into an airport terminal. <laughs> no, I've, it's just I've like drop ceilings, yeah. cubicle walls for like <laughs> where the security lines are. And in the terminal area, there's like one coffee cart and that's it. There's nothing else in some restrooms. That's it. This is a little bit more than that. There's several restaurants and two bathrooms but one of the bathrooms is mobbed. And the other bathroom, it looks like a r- normal bathroom from the outside, the classic airport bathroom where it's this large gaping like opening. And then there's like a symbol on the left for one gender and a symbol on the right for the It looks exactly like that. Right. And you go down the symbol. and But then inside there is just five doors. <laughs> and you open up the door. They look like real doors. And then behind that door is just a porta potty. It's not like... <laughs> The, well, not like a national park porta potty, but like, like the porta potties they had at the uh, 
at the uh, the Marist uh, Senior Week thing. It's like like a trailer with sure. five porta potties in it was backed up to the terminal. Right. Uh, so it was terrible. <laughs> and anyway, so it doesn't take long to leave this shitty area. Uh, and I get to the desk, and by some miracle, I'm the first person at the ticket desk. There's nobody else there at all. And I show up and I say, I'm here about the canceled flight. And then the lady goes, what canceled flight? And I'm like, uh, I was just in the terminal at, you know, gate whatever, AS714, and they said that we need to go to the ticket desk to get our rebooking. And then I look behind me, and now there's like 300 people behind me. It's like through <laughs> all the stanchions, out down the hallway, around the corner. Yep. And these people, they're like, oh, give me a moment. And then like all five Alaska Air employees just like stare at this computer for like 30 minutes. And then each of them are making phone calls on their cell phone. They're making calls on the normal phone. And finally, and I'm like, you all, I like, I know that you, it's very clear that you have no idea what's going on, but I think it would help if you communicated that you had no idea what's going on, because I'm sure the people at the end of the line are like, is this just how long it takes to rebook one person's flight? Does it take 30 minutes for one of these transactions to go through? Right. And so finally they say, uh, your flight has not been canceled, and everyone cheers, yet, but it might be canceled because the plane suffered hail damage. Uh, so we're not sure, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, that was my travel experience, was this, like, we sat there until, so that was like 7.30 when the flight was initially canceled. I left the airport around 11 p.m., and it was just, like, a slow purgatory march towards, like, this flight is going to be fucking canceled because it's also the Newark airport. At, by 10.30, there's nobody left in the airport at all. Like, nobody. It's like, this flight is canceled. Can we please just get on with it? Um, right. And then, of course, it's like, well, should I... They haven't, like, I don't have a thing. Like, the app still says the flight, you know, is leaving at 7.30 or whatever, which doesn't make any sense. Um. And I don't have a rebooked flight. I'm not going to leave the airport until I'm doing this. But should I book a flight preemptively in case, like, who knows what's happening? This is a weird world we're living in. Should I book a hotel room preemptively while I sit here? Are they going to pay for the hotel room? They right. haven't said. Uh, I've been in a situation before where you, you wait to do that, and now all the hotel rooms are booked out because all the other people on your flight booked all the hotel rooms. Right. <sighs> and then I, you know, so... Luckily, Mike, friend of the show, Mike, was there, not there, nearby, and I could sleep on his couch, so I did that. That's good. And I show up bright and early, 6 a.m. the next day to do it all over again. The flight was delayed twice, and this time it actually did take off. <laughs> That's um, good. Oh, the worst part. This was the worst part. The worst part was definitely the purgatory waiting in line with 300 other people waiting for anything to happen at all and just not knowing. Every other time my flight has been canceled, the flight is just canceled. It's just boom, done, right. out, you're done. Here's your, here's your, you know, your date and time. Get out of here. This yeah. was like really stressful. <laughs> but the second worst part was the next day, it's a flight left at, I think the flight left at nine. So it like boarded at 825 or something like that. So, you know, you get there by seven. So I'm there at 730. I'm standing in front of the gates. Oh, also the Newark airport doesn't have TSA pre-check. It, it does. They, they will... The, you will get a crumpled piece of paper if you have TSA pre-check that just prevents you from having to take your shoes off. Not, no other special dispensation is given. You have to take everything out of your bag. You have to wait in line with everybody else. Anyway, so I get there at 7.30. And um, I think it was after the first time it was delayed or maybe right before the first time it was delayed. The, the, these extremely... These two chipper people in yeah. yeah. I feel I know it's a really hard line to walk, but you know the the person where it's just like how you know I you're overcompensating for the shittiness of the situation. They're like, "Wow, we're like so sorry that you're going through this. You know, we were here last night too, and we feel you. So why don't we play trivia? First person to come up and answer the question gets a whatever the fuck they were giving away. Like, what's the capital of New Jersey? And I'm like, like, boop. It's like if you're not going to tell me if this flight is leaving or not today, I'm but at the same time, so I put like my headphones back on. I was like, I still have to listen because they might say if the flight's canceled or something. So I can't just ignore these. Uh. So I had to wait around and listen to them play these stupid trivia games in this really happy voice. I'm like, it's 7.30 in the morning. Just please, 
Tell me. Oh, right. And then I was like, well, maybe I should get coffee. Right? Because then the, the first time the flight was delayed for 30 minutes, I was like, well, now I have enough time to get coffee. Now the flight's not boarding until 9. It's 8 a.m. And I go over to the one place that sells coffee in the Newark airport. And it's just, boom, just like completely <laughs> like like a, like a the place that gives out the food rations in an apocalypse <laughs> movie or something. It's like, well, no, nah, never mind. Yeah. <sighs> that sounds terrible. The, uh, it was. Yeah. The, we had a, well, in the in holiday travel this past year, we had a, the last time I successfully traveled anywhere without getting COVID or something. Um, a miracle, actually. That was probably uh, one of the worst times. Of <laughs> right. Of all the times you'd think you'd have got it. Um, yeah. We, yeah. So we got caught up in that whole like month of just like constant canceled flights. And most of them, like, they got canceled before you got to the airport. Or like most of the airlines. Like, right. I, at some point, I had flights on JetBlue and Delta, and both JetBlue and Delta canceled the flights, like, the day before. <laughs> um, JetBlue canceled my flight at, like, midnight the night before and rescheduled me for an earlier flight. Like, I was on at 8 a.m., and they rescheduled me for, like, a 6.30 flight at midnight. <laughs> like I, if I hadn't been up, I wouldn't have known. And the flight was to yeah J- exactly, and that's what I was worried about. Yeah, what I was waiting in line is like, <laughs> how when will I know when my flight is? Right, and the the flight they they oh that was another thing. I, while I was waiting in line, I thought, uh, oh right, I got a series of text messages. I skipped over. There's many steps to the like the <laughs> slow purgatory cancellation. Yeah, w- one email I got an email I think that said, "We're sorry for the inconvenience. We're going to give you a two hundred dollar credit." And I was like. In lieu of what? Because my flight still has not been canceled, nor have you told me that it's been rescheduled. So is this a $200, sorry, we can't fly you anywhere? Is this $200 in addition to the fact that we screwed up? Right. And then the, I got a text message saying, your flight has been canceled. Click here to see your new itinerary. And I click here, and it's like, your itinerary is not available right now. And then 30 minutes later, I got an email that did the same thing. And it still wasn't available. All right, I would click on that, and it would say, your itinerary isn't available right now to, to view your itinerary call this number to speak to an agent. So I call that number and like, ring, ring, ring. Uh, thank you for calling Alaska Airlines. The current wait time is, and you have that like dynamic uh, voice thing where it's like, current wait time is pause five to seven pause hours. It's like, <laughs> oh, so I, you know, the flight could leave at 6 a.m. It's 11 o'clock. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyways, continue. Yes, I had, yeah. That was a real concern. Yeah. So they, they, they did that. And similarly, it was like, like I called on the phone and it was like, I called on the phone because, well, th- so the other thing, the flight left at 6 a.m., but it was now a connecting flight through New York. And so it was like a 6 a.m. flight to JFK and then a 12 hour layover and then a like <laughs> 9 p.m. flight to Minnesota. <laughs> it's like, well, I'm not doing that. Um, and JFK, I, one of the worst places to lay over. <laughs> At least there's stuff in the airport, but there's nothing around the airport, right? Um, yeah, just terrible. And so, so, and I also, it was also, you know, I called on the phone. And it was like expected wait time is more than three hours. And I was like, well, I'm just going to bed, and yeah. they'll 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 have I to refund me. All the, after when I they said up. five to seven, I was like. Please say five to seven minutes, but I was like, why would they say five to seven minutes? Like it must be hours. And it's like boom, hours. The hammer drops. Like too yeah. specific. Yeah. And then we <laughs> we also so the other the other extreme. So we had a we booked a flight on Sun Country, which is like they almost exclusively fly as, as far as I can tell. They fly like from the Midwest to like the Caribbean. Like that's 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 their route. Hmm. Um, but they have like a couple random flights and there, there's a flight from Boston to Minnesota. And so in, in the midst of trying to get back, one of the flights we booked was on sun country and it was at like, you know, insanely early, like five thirty or something, or like, like we, we got up at three thirty to go to the airport 
And we got there and it was, as you described, you know, two delays, like the flight before us was delayed. Um, and then like we had a delay and then we had another delay and then there was another delay. And then someone got on the intercom and it just said, your flight's been canceled. You'll be refunded. Please, please leave. And like, like that was it. There was no, there was like, they were like, they didn't, didn't offer any more information at the counter. <laughs> it's like, you've been cut. Goodbye. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, they did refund us. So I guess, I guess that's good. But as is that, I need to check to see if I actually got any of these $200 or any of this stuff. Um, what was I going to say? I was wondering during all of this, uh, what, how much would it cost to run a reliable airline? Like how much more would it cost? Uh, because I'm sure like a airlines have to overbook things. And so there's a certain amount of time where they, they overbook and no one cancels and then they're just screwed. Right. They're not screwed. You are, um, (laughs) <laughs> there's <laughs> planes break down crew members get sick right you need to have some amount of uh over provisioning to do this reliably but no one does that right it's like how much well they must have like, some over like how much would you pay extra to have, have, have like well yeah yes and no right because like do they have like how many 747s do they have laying around in JFK just waiting to go <laughs> in case one breaks? Probably right. zero most of the time, unless they just you just get lucky. Right. You know that's probably the hard part. That's true. Yeah. I remember I, I was reading something about like JetBlue had a really bad week or something, and they were saying like the thing I was reading was describing like jet blue doesn't really have a hub. Um, they kind of do like, they're constantly hmm. like moving planes around and there was weather in like two, there was weather in Florida, like bad weather in Florida and there was bad weather in the Midwest. And so like two of their places that many planes go through to other places were like came to a stop and so they couldn't like, they just had like deadlock because, because of that, like they just, they're, they're like the planes didn't get from those yeah. places to the place that they were supposed to be for their, right. for their flight. So it was just like, well, <laughs> nothing's happening now. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Don't travel. I'm yeah. I'm like, I have a summer of zero flights. And I'm really looking forward to it. We're going to do only local, yeah. local trips. Some of them are going to be far away, but uh, if we don't get there, it is all within our control. We can always get there if you pay more money. Well, I don't know. <laughs> right. Rental car shortage, so maybe not. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Just stay home. It's fine. I think we learned our lesson. We tried. Speaking we- of. <laughs> Speaking of paying more money, uh, tech news causes you to pay more money. It does was an attempt. It was an attempt. Does it? Sometimes. Sometimes it does. Oh, guess what I got today? Speaking of paying more money, I got my hands on one of those Cal Digit Thunderbolt docks. <sighs> That have been sold out everywhere. Well, I supposedly, I, they right. said they were in stock and I submitted an order and they said it was accepted. Um, we'll see. Oh, I see. So you don't, you, you got your digital hands on, on a I got my digital deck. hands on it. Right. I have, I have the NFT, uh, receipt nice. for one of these things. That's awesome. Yeah. That so far, knock on wood, that's one of the more reliable pieces of technology I own. <laughs> the CalDigit dock in my, my Apple cinema display that I've had for like nine years. Those, those are wow. still trucking. Yeah. 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 My little dongle had a real incident <laughs> and the dongle incident last week. It, I forget what happened. Like, <laughs> everything was broken. Like, Oh yeah. It just totally shut off. Like, <laughs> Uh, the network thing went out, all the USB things disconnected, 
and I had to restart everything to, to get it back. Not good. Um, so hopefully that will solve all my problems. It's just this one, just one more thing. Just buy one more thing, and then all my problems will <laughs> right. solve. That's the promise of capitalism. Right. Moving target. Speaking of capitalism, there we go. Let's talk about technology <laughs> news. How about that? I like um, it. I don't know how we're going to do this with only two people. How do you pick the stories? Do we just want to do uh, top to bottom lightning round? Let's do it. Bottom to top? All right, top. Uh, yeah, th- there's a story in here. It's just about how Snapchat is saying they're going to slow down hiring, but I think there's a broader meta story uh, that are like lots of companies are doing layoffs, slowing down hiring, not investing in things. Will it be another recession? Will it be the dot-com bust? Nobody knows, I don't think. Maybe somebody knows. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Has, have this, has this been uh, a, a current affecting your life, Colby? Has this sloshed up on your banks? Um, We've discussed it. Theoretically will be okay for a while as a early stage startup who people have given a, you know, like, like I think we're, we're like, okay for like a couple of years. Like we're just at the beginning of our, uh, our, our most recent loan journey. So in the short term, (laughs) it probably won't affect us directly, but like if people start, stop paying for software tools it it might it might affect us directly um because the you know yeah i was listening to a podcast before this yeah go ahead i was listening to a podcast before this where they were talking about what the dot-com bust was like and i didn't it makes tons of sense i didn't really think about it and all the other times i've conceptualized it but all the knock-on effects of this happening like okay if, if there's a bunch of tech companies and they all stop spending money like yeah sure it's harder to get a job if you're a software engineer maybe you don't make as much money but also like commercial real estate was like completely it was actually kind of like a pandemic in in san francisco they were making the comparison like traffic got better all the offices were abandoned (laughs) um the funniest story i heard was there was a billboard on the side of the highway for a, a start a startup called garden.com it was like amazon for garden supplies and the billboard was like a plant wall but then they went out of business and they weren't paying anyone to water the plants and it's california so it was just like a <laughs> dead plant wall and it was lit up at night and it was just like illuminating this dead plant wall and everything uh but then like event planners companies aren't having events aren't having off sites the event planners and the restaurants and the businesses and and yeah, and then the, the consulting companies that make money off of the the tech companies and the banks and the venture capitalists and it all yeah yeah it's all it's even more connected now than it was twenty years ago. Yeah, there are like a lot of things to spend money on as a as a <laughs> as a company, and a lot. Oh, I guess, yeah. Conversely, a lot of things to not spend money on if you uh, if you so choose. Yeah, it's interesting. Well, yeah, it's interesting for me because we don't have an office, and so That's there's true. the whole geographic effects of a recession wouldn't really be felt by us because it's not like you know we all go to this restaurant every Tuesday and it wouldn't be open, or that the office you know offices would go away or anything like that yeah um so it, it'll, it'll be weird if it does happen or maybe it just won't be any different at all i just won't notice right yeah um all right we're, we're in lightning round mode any thoughts on the impending our impending doom yeah uh, i don't know it's coming for us one way or the other so yeah <laughs> Uh, speaking of impending doom, uh, crypto exchange FTX. I FTX is is that the one Matt I've never heard of it commercial until, for. I have no idea. Maybe they're like there's a 
was a New York Times article written about the founder and he's like the grown up crypto guy or something and they are like a much more responsible mm. or at least that's how they want what they want you to think. Right. Cryptocurrency exchange. Well, they're getting into stock trading. It's a you know new innovation, just like Elon Musk and the uh, underground <laughs> uh, car tunnel. Uh, everything old is new again. Um, wouldn't it be cool if we could trade stocks on the internet? Uh, anyone can do it. That'd be cool. Sounds wild. Uh, I read this article. I, I didn't actually read it. I read an article about an article. Um a couple weeks ago, and I actually saved it. It was uh, an article by Current Affairs. And in this article, I guess I'll put this in here too, since we're talking about it. How do I do this? Insert row below. Um, in here, they make this claim, and I didn't understand what this means. I, I wish Sean were here. Sean, this is another thing Sean might know about. They said... Uh, so the stock market and the bond market are positive sum game. There are more winners than losers, which is, I never thought about that slash didn't know that. I don't really understand why that is necessarily the case. Cryptocurrency is a zero sum game. It starts with a world where there can be no more winning than losing. Uh, we have other systems like this. They're called casinos, <laughs> um, which I also never really thought about it. Uh, in fact, a casino, there has to be more losing than winning, right? Otherwise, you would you would just have a if you if there's just as much winning as losing, you'd you'd be a you know right you just be moving, profit moving money casino, around. right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But does that make any sense to you? Why is this? Why are bonds and stock markets a definitionally positive sum <sighs> game? Maybe in that. There's some like external input to the system, right? Like, mm. yeah, like for example, how much money countries print, yeah, or like, and like, you know, a new company can join the stock market and offer stocks, but like, you know, there's no new Bitcoin, there's the, I mean, I guess there is, but. It's not accessible to people. There, well, right. There kind of is. Right. Uh, increasingly. But eventually there, there won't amount. be. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, so is it Matt Damon? Is it Matt Damon uh, FTX? Matt Damon FTX. I don't know. I, there were several. It does autocomplete. Right. There were several crypto. Super Bowl commercials, and I'm pretty sure Matt Damon was. Is Matt Damon friend. shilling for crypto? New York Times dot com. Oh no, this was crypto dot com. He did. There you go. Is crypto dot com still around? Let's see. <laughs> now nope. defunct. Crypto still goes crypto. up, and there's Matt Damon right there. Wow. Damn. Oh, their website just reminded me. I, I, uh, in my fury at my travel problems. I was looking up what are the top 10 worst airports in the world. And it was this website where they rate, like, how is it to stay in the airport? And oh, yeah. it was like, uh, Dubai, Sudan, LaGuardia, Saudi Arabia, like a bunch of these like really shitty countries in LaGuardia is up there. Newark did not make the list, but yeah, oh. that, that one terminal in LaGuardia. Oh my God. <laughs> it's like, it's like sleeping in an insurance company office. <laughs> um, Okay. Nice. Anything else about FTX or crypto in general? Have, crypto. have you what? What's your current philosophy or outlook on? <laughs> I have some ETH that I still, bought. Have you ever I... successfully bought an NFT? <laughs> no. Oh yeah, you were early on this, <laughs> right? I I I have some ETH that I bought when we were trying to buy NFTs, <laughs> and I think it has lost a, a <laughs> decent chunk of its value since then. Um. Yeah. I still have some, some straggling Bitcoin, some fractions of a Bitcoin. I don't know. Maybe now's the time to buy some more. <laughs> it's always come back before. I guess. Uh, mm, yeah. I've, uh, 
Yeah, I've lost fifteen dollars in my cryptocurrency in the last month, That's out of a total of thirty-six dollars. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's like half. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, I like the last time Bitcoin was on the up and up, like three years ago. Like I bought some. I don't know why. I was just in a weird place, I guess, and I got a uh, got caught up in the hype, and then it crashed. But then I just like didn't. I just waited, and I. I, I like sold, like I recouped the money I had put into it before it crashed. And so I just have some, some, some change left that is not a meaningful amount of Bitcoin. Um, sometimes I think about what would have happened if, the... I, if I didn't sell my Bitcoin to go to Hawaii that time, those two Bitcoins that I had. <laughs> <laughs> two whole Bitcoins. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh that's one hell of a Hawaii vacation, or at least it was. Still would be. It's even today, right? That's like forty thousand dollars, I think. Yeah, I man. remember what I just saw on my app. Uh, yep. That's like sixty thousand dollars actually. Yeah. That's a Hawaii vacation that you you know tell your grandkids about. <laughs> Not that you wouldn't tell your grandkids about the Hawaii vacation that we went on. Right. I totally will, but <laughs> <laughs> we are knock on wood i have some wood here to knock on actually I keep it here just for this purpose we're going to hawaii in october and so i've actually this is a thing that happens um well so hopefully we're going to hawaii in october we're going to maui hopefully nice um and i was like we need to go to a resort and lena was like very not in favor of going to a resort she's like why would i go to a resort there's so many things we could do in maui I'm like no no it was like you know what about relaxing? I feel like you really, I had never been to a resort. And was it you who put the idea in my head that we should go to a resort in Hawaii? It might have been, yeah. Because you're a resort, you're a bit of a resort connoisseur now. I've been to a resort, a thing called a resort two times. The first time was in Hawaii. Okay. And then I went to Jamaica oh, okay. once, which I didn't like. Hawaii was way better than. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Got it. The crowd in Jamaica um, was but just But Lena just went to a... Yeah. Right. <laughs> Too loud. Lena just went to a work retreat in California at a resort. Mm. She came back and she was raving about it. Like, <laughs> you know, they'll have people come bring you sunscreen when you sit by the pool. Exactly. Like, wow. I mean, no, that didn't happen to us. <laughs> uh, but they would take our drink orders. Right. Uh, while we sat by the pool. Do you remember they had... So anyways, now Lena's on board. Nice. I remember the place we went, they had like... It was like a mint pina colada or something. And it sounded insane, but it was one of the best things I've ever drank. So good. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it was about their drinks. It may have been spiked with something. <laughs> yeah. Because they didn't look super fancy but they did taste really good yeah like like they looked like any like a crappy uh like blended frozen drink yeah. you would get but like they tasted awesome yep. hawaii i'm jealous all right Te um, tech news Speaking of being jealous, <laughs> how do you use your iPhone as a white noise machine? I I do not know how to use my iPhone for, as a white noise machine. I don't know. I didn't actually read the article. Um, oh, go to... Oh, interesting. Oh, I see. Yeah, this is like in a genre of thing that's been happening a lot recently where Apple makes an accessibility feature that, like many of their accessibility features, is broadly useful. <laughs> yeah. Um, the one I remember reading about recently was... In uh, if you're on a FaceTime call, and I think other apps can support this, but most don't. I don't know where this is. I haven't done it yet. But there's a and if you're using AirPods, I think there's you can change a setting so that it like isolates your voice. It does like reverse noise canceling on your audio, uh, so other people can hear you better. I think mm. I think that's what it was. But it's a setting, um, which is cool. That is cool. I I think so, but it's like a per app setting. 
Oh. Um, I think I vaguely remember them demoing this because you can. There's another setting you can change where instead of doing that, it captures everything. It's like I'm I'm recording like my band's jam session, and I want you to listen over FaceTime or something, and then sure. it like doesn't try to isolate anything. Right. But this, it looks like, is you go to settings, accessibility, audio, visual, background sounds. Uh, and you can toggle on a couple background sounds. You have balanced noise. These are these names are very interesting. <laughs> One name is balanced noise, bright noise, dark noise, ocean, rain, and stream. So three three noise sounds and then three water sounds. Those are your options. Yeah. And you can even keep them running while other things. Other sounds are playing, which is interesting. Huh. That's cool. Have you ever tried you to add use, it to control like, center? Have you ever tried to use like voiceover on your phone? Not on purpose, but when I No. Continue. It's it's really it's uh it's kind of fun. It's very scary at first. Because there's a lot of yelling. But <laughs> um, I was, I, I think did I've it. heard it. I think I, maybe I did do it accidentally once. Oh, you, you probably have accidentally the, uh, I was doing it a bunch because I, I, I was working two, I guess two jobs in recurse center ago. I was working it on, on like a, a mobile app. And so we had to do like testing. We had to test that stuff. Um, cause it was something like people would like, businesses like potential customers would ask about accessibility things um in addition to it being a useful thing but it was like it was kind of cool and you could if you ever get stuck in it yeah it's really impressive yeah you can the 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 best thing i learned was that you can ask siri to turn it on and off like you can hold 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 the side button and say siri turn 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 it on i assume you could do that with most of these things like ask siri to do it and she can mm -hmm. probably do that in a way that she can't do anything else these days but uh that's cool i didn't even know what i was getting into i picked this without a <laughs> without reading. No, it's it. good. We that this is what we should do, yeah, in the future. We should just randomly pick stories. Right. Feeling lucky. Um Yeah. Yeah, the only only I use accessibility oh. features. Um I don't think I ended up using I did do a little bit of voice transcription when I hurt my finger because it was then much faster to talk and then go through and edit than it was to try to type. Uh, but right. the big thing for me was there was, I think it was the, the Nintendo Switch Pokemon game had a one-handed mode. So you could use, you could do everything in the game with just one side of the controller, uh, which was great. Because <laughs> <laughs> playing a game with, uh, with one of your hands is like very cumbersomely bandaged is really awkward because it's like you can't really hold it normally so then you kind of like you know put your fingers in the way so you're kind of like trying to tap this way it was it's right. not a good scene <laughs> um cool all right moving right along the ipod is officially gone you can no longer buy anything from apple called an ipod colby what was your first ipod i had It wasn't the mini. It was after the mini. The nano? Yes, the nano. Tiny. I, I can't remember if it was... It was either... I think it was one, exactly one gigabyte. And it had the tiny color screen. That was my first iPod. I don't know what I had before that. What about you? Uh, do you know they released the iPod Nano in 2012, and it looked like an even smaller iPhone? I don't think I ever saw one of these. No. It's crazy. Oh, damn. That's, yeah, that's weird. Um, my first one was the iPod Video, and mm -hmm. I hacked it and put Linux on it. <laughs> just at some point thereafter. Not immediately. 
at some point in my high school journey, nice. um, which was cool, but extremely useless. Uh, it didn't make it. The only thing actually, it did make it a better device to use if you weren't using a Mac, because then you could just drag the MP3s onto it mm. and it like showed up as a hard drive. That was actually a better interface than, than iTunes. That was the only advantage though. Yeah. The battery life was worse. It was very difficult to use. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I remember so many people had iPod minis. That's the one that I really... That's like what I think of when I think of iPods. Huh. I definitely think of the classic iPod. I don't know why. Mm. These were cool, though. These... These were aluminum. You got them in the different colors. Right. All kinds of colors. Good stuff. Speaking of music, I have been trying Apple Music. I decided... Well, actually, Laura and I were tempted by the the Apple One, uh, like $20 a month for mm -hmm. a bunch of things mm -hmm. that we had. Um, and so, I don't know. We just signed up for it and we were like, well, I guess we're going to try Apple music and like, I use some app. Maybe it'll be my pick. I use some app that likes, like slurps your playlists off of Spotify and shoots them over to Apple music. And that works pretty well. Um, the, <laughs> The, the one, the thing I immediately noticed is like the Spotify is kind of annoying. Like the, A, they have a lot of things that pop up in your face when you, when you open the app now. I don't know if that happens to you too. It's like all the time. I'm just trying yeah, to play. Like, oh, listen to this podcast and <laughs> right. watch this video. Right. I'm just trying to put a song on and you're, you're harassing me. Um, and the other thing that I had never considered because it's been this way on Spotify for so long, but like the, the, the button to select to, to get to the airplay menu is like three levels deep mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. Spotify and on Apple music. Obviously it's like, just like right there. It was very convenient. I was very pleased when I had to go like get my AirPods <laughs> to connect, but I don't know. It still seems like I It is so. Yes. And it is very slow. Yeah. Even on the Mac, even on the iPhone, is this song just take longer to start and it's very noticeable and annoying. <laughs> That's annoying. I haven't I probably haven't used it enough to notice that. I d I did try and turn it on like I tried to log in on my work computer today, which I hadn't done. And it popped up a thing is like, oh, you have to like merge your libraries or something. And I was like, okay. So I clicked merge my library. And then for 20 minutes, it just sat there spinning and said like syncing your iCloud library and just nothing ever happened. So, Whoa. <laughs> so I can't listen on my, on my, that sucks. There is a web app. Is there? Weird. Uh, if push comes to shove, I think so. It's crazy. Am I, did I make that up? I mean, yeah, 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 there is. I mean, it makes sense that there is. Maybe I'll just use that. I don't know. Um, I haven't gone so far as to unsubscribe from Spotify yet. So just trying it out. Me either, to be honest. I'm paying, been paying for both for some time, which is not great. <laughs> not great. Um, speaking of picks, <laughs> I realized I had never even thought to pick one. This week, I was so distracted right. doing all of the work that Sean does. Um, that guy. Just look around my physical space here to see if there's anything I can pick. I have these Trader Joe's jalapeno popcorn snacks. Um... Stall. Stalling. I don't have anything to pick. Probably. I think it seems it seems like the uh, uh 
No, I think I think the uh All right, no, maybe I will pick something. Maybe I will pick something. Oh. Do you have your pick, Colby, or should I should I go first? I'm looking up what it is. I think I found it. Song shift. Okay. Yeah, here we go. This was it. The song shift. Yeah, this right. this is the app. We're in. Right. This is the app. This song shift app is the app that I use to sync my Spotify things to Apple Music. Um, and it seems like it seems like you can connect like an arbitrary number of like music players and it it can take things from one and put them into another one. Uh, that's cool. Yeah. It was kind of a lot of work cuz it does like it, it tries to match stuff, but I guess it doesn't, you know, it can't always do it automatically. So, so there's some manual labor involved in say, going through and saying like, yes, that's what I meant. No, that's not what I meant. And like, sometimes it would just mm. not be able to match something, but then you would open the search and search for it and it would show up right there. Like the first result I was like, why, why, why couldn't you do this for me? That's but, weird. Huh? it did do the thing that, that it advertised. So if you're trying to, uh, trying to escape, uh, platform lock in could be the app for you. Sweet. Yeah. And it's free. You know, it's interesting. I took the opposite approach and I just, I just didn't do any of that stuff. And I kind of had the opportunity to like start from scratch. Yeah. Um, which was interesting. I don't. I'm, I don't know if I would do it again. I don't think this thing existed when I started using Apple Music, which was like in 2015, <laughs> whenever it came out. Uh, but it was a nice reset point, kind of like when you get a new computer and you decide not to restore it from backup. Right. You get to clear out all the cruft. Mm-hmm. The purge. Nice. Well, cool. Songshift.com. Dot com. Um, I've got a video game pick. Lena was gone last weekend, and so I decided to try to play Cyberpunk 2077, a much maligned game that apparently has gotten much better with patches. And I will say it's pretty good if you want... Remember a long time ago, like right around this podcast was starting, there was a game coming out called Watch Dogs, which is supposed to be like sci-fi Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. This is... Sci-fi Grand Theft Auto, Cyberpunk is Sci-fi Grand Theft Auto, but with like you get stats and you get different guns and stuff, and you like do crafting and things like that. It's like hard, more quote unquote hardcore gameplay. Um, if that sounds appealing to you, uh, the story is interesting so far, um, but it is kind of it. It does have a very bleak outlook on life which I gather is true to the source material, but it's understandable if you are not interested in that kind of thing right now. But if you have the emotional bandwidth for it, it is interesting, I think. Available on all the things, but probably shouldn't play it on a PS4, sadly. Because <laughs> they, I think we did talk about how they got their game, they, the PS4 version got removed from the PS4 store at the time. But it seems... Better now. The, I only had one weird bug happen so far, which was uh, your character gets sick, like cyber sick, cyber sick <laughs> at some point and like starts glitching out. Uh, and this happens a couple times. And then what it happened to me while I was playing last night and then it just like kept glitching out. And I was like, is this just how I have to play the game from now on? Or is like at some point, is this going to stop? And then I was like, maybe. Let me try restarting the game. I restarted the game and it wasn't happening. Oh. <laughs> okay. So I just been like putting up with this for 20 minutes uh, unnecessarily. Uh, that's terrible. I think I actually cool when this when this first came when this game first came out, I someone I knew was really excited about it was on the hype train and so I downloaded it um on my PS4. It was like pretty bad. And, oh no. And when I before I think it was before they pulled it from the store, but they did have like you could you could 
like there was a first party Sony button in the store to like ask for a refund. <laughs> and I pressed the ask for a refund. Oh, wow. Button. And I got it. I got refunded. That's crazy. Yeah. So I played like 20 minutes. Wow. Of it. It's wild. Yeah. Um, great. Uh, this is the part of the show where Sean usually pitches something else he's involved in. I know he has a new show with Sean that I subscribe to, but haven't listened to yet. Oh no, he's just producing it. Right. Right. He's not. And that it. show is called something. Tomorrow never Do you die. What it's called? No, tomorrow I, is tomorrow. Yesterday. Tomorrow. Tomorrow is canceled. Tomorrow is canceled. Tomorrow, tomorrow is yesterday. <laughs> yesterday is tomorrow. Uh, looks like they have one episode out, playfully entitled Episode Zero, The Ugg Mug. Um, if you want to check that out, it's tomorrowscanceled.com. You'll hear the expert engineering and production qualities that only Sean can provide. Right. Notably missing from this evening's episode. Yes. Is we we miss him deeply. Yeah. Uh that's it. How do we end this thing? We just end it? We just stop? I guess so. Bye. Alright.